What's going on guys, this is Gene Denson, and today I want to talk about my namesake. My favorite bait to fish back in the day, I don't fish it so much anymore, but this time of the year, fall transition, September, it is time to break out the fluke. <laughs> I love this time of the year, golly. Stay tuned, let's dive into it. I'm going to get into the nitty gritty about a fluke. People ask me this all the time. Why do you call yourself Fluke Master? Where did Fluke Master come from? Well, let's go ahead and break that out there. Fluke Master, back in the day when I was new to, basically new to the internet, back in 2001, 2002, uh, there were the forums and they were bass fishing forums. And I think the first one I joined was called uh, the Bass Fishing Homepage. Um, no, was it? But yeah, Bass Fishing Homepage. And I needed to come up with a screen name. And everybody at that point in time was calling them something master. You know, even Ed Bassmaster. That's where his name comes from. Uh, and so um, I was the fluke master. It was a bait that I was trying to gain confidence in. I really had started catching good fish from the bank with it. And I was a, a diehard bank fisherman. And, I, and so I just called myself that more of motivation and more because I couldn't come up with anything better. And it stuck, and I couldn't get rid of it. So here I am as the fluke master, and uh, and it is what it is. You know, I stayed on forums for 12, 15 years. Uh, Facebook started and stuff like that, and YouTube, and I just couldn't get away from the name, and I tried. But that's how it just started from. But the fluke itself, fluke is a great bait. It mimics a bait fish fleeing away from the bass. It looks like a dying bait fish. You can make it look like so many different things, and it works really, really well when they're up shallow and they're feeding or they're they need a reaction strike and that kind of stuff and so the two different types of soft jerk baits or flukes that i use are the zoom super fluke and the strike king uh caffeine shad i use the caffeine shad if i want to work super fast and make longer casts because it's full of salt it sinks a little bit faster and it you can do crazy stuff with it now most of the time though i'm fishing a soup or zoom super fluke because um, I like to be able to get it to stall and look more like of a more like a dying dead a dying bait fish, and it causes the bass to, to to feed on those. I mean to eat pretty pretty much all the time. There's a fish like right there, behind under my boat. I don't know what it was, but anyway, <laughs> a little bit of a distraction. All right, let me regroup. All right, so the hook that I'm using, I use two different types of hooks. I use a Gamagatsu offset round bend hook, 4 uh, or I use a 4 Gamagatsu EWG. This right here, this is a G Finesse EWG. I like them because they're a little bit stiffer, they're a little bit thinner wired than their, than their regular EWGs, and um, they work, work really good from a kayak, and they work really good when you're using these medium, medium moderate, moderate power rods. So let me back up a little bit, get the sun out of my head. I'm trying to I'm racing the sun right now trying to get this intro done before I get out there because it gets it's gonna get super bright but uh fluorocarbon line is a must I'm gonna put it on a leader this is about a 15 to 18 inch leader and I usually am somewhere in that ballpark uh, 15 pound fluorocarbon main line can be either braid like a 40 or 50 pound braid just because 50 is a little bit easier to cast you get fewer bait backlashes um, and then a large barrel swivel okay i want to say this is a size 10 but don't quote me just a large barrel swivel i'm not really picky on the size um and then the rod either a medium fast action rod or a medium medium heavy moderate rod um either one have has enough backbone to be able to set the hook and be able to drive that hook through the plastic and into the fish uh and, a, and it makes them makes it easier to cast so the medium moderate or the medium heavy moderate is easier to cast a light lure than a medium fast, but uh, I'll use either one. They are definitely shallow and on the bank, I'll tell you that. All right, so the reel. I like two different speed reels, a six six to one or a seven three to one gear ratio reel or any kind of seven speed or six speed reel. I don't like an eight three to one because I tend to work it too fast um, and, and it, it just, it picks up too much line for me. But, uh, one of the keys to fish at a fluke is how you hook it. Okay, I'm gonna unhook this one real quick. It is so critical. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna put a link up to a video right here that talks about how I straighten these 
these flukes out I heat them up and put them in hot water and so on and so forth get them to be perfectly straight out of the package because a lot of times you get those zoom flukes and they're not straight they're all kinked up and you you get it just doesn't work so you got to make sure they're straight before you go fish them I actually will go through all of the flukes that are hanging on a peg in the store and make sure I get the ones that were put in the bag right and they didn't slant, didn't didn't get kinked up all right but the biggest key is hooking it straight down the center. Let me see if I can show you guys this, all right? You wanna make sure that the tip of that, that hook, especially with the EWG, goes straight down the middle, okay? And you come out straight down the middle. See how, oh, it's hard to show on camera, but see how that's coming out straight down the middle. Take it, turn it, again, I'm making sure that it's coming. That tip of that hook, when I put it through, I make sure it comes straight out the center. Shade. Straight out of the center. That hook has to be right down the middle or you're gonna get kind of an odd action. It'll start to spin on you, uh, all kinds of stuff. So you really gotta, gotta make sure that's straight no matter what hook you use. Um, I can't, I can't stress that enough. But anyway, so make sure it's straight. Make sure it's on a leader. Uh, the reason for the large swivel is a little bit of weight in the front of it to be able to pull it down a little bit better. Um, and, and that's it. And you go fishing. Now, typically, like in the spawn and early spring, when I'm throwing it in the spring, I'm going to weight it. In the fall, I'm not typically weighting it because I, I tend to fish it a lot slower and I don't need it to sink as fast. Or I tend to just slow roll it and reel it, and I really want it to be up near that sur the surface of the water. Um, and that's it. That's how you rig it. Let's get out and fish it. But before I do that, let me show you one more thing I forgot. <laughs> so, you can either leave it like this if you're not fishing a whole lot of cover, like grass, like the hook sticking out like that. Or you can skin hook it, which is you squeeze it, you push the bait forward, and kind of tuck the tip of that hook in there. Now, understand that this technique, fishing a fluke, a bass will tear it up. You're probably you be lucky to get two bass out of each fluke, uh, which is kind of something I don't like about it. Um, but once that thing gets torn up or it gets kinked off to the side or that hook gets off centered, it's not going to fish right. You're not going to catch any more fish. So be willing if you're going to fish this technique. Be willing to put a new fluke on there earlier than you really want to. Um, and uh, drives me nuts, but I have to do it too. Some of the places that I would fish this, this time of the year, especially September into October, is I'm gonna start with the mouths of the creeks. The bait fish are pulling out of the main lake, they're working towards the backs of the creeks, but it's the very beginning of that. So I'm gonna start the mouths of the creeks on reservoirs, man-made reservoirs, and on natural lakes like you see a lot up north. I'm gonna start in the openings or the around the mouth of large bays um, and, and large shallow areas up on the flat points and things like that. And I'm just gonna, like I said, I'm just gonna cover a lot of water. And when I'm covering a lot of water um, in a kayak, I'm standing up. It just, it's easier, it's faster, it's more efficient to stand up and fish out of it. Um, that's why a stable boat is so critical. But then uh, even bank fishing and boat fishing, I'm making sure I'm standing up and I'm really, really active because I'm, I'm working super fast or faster than I have been all summer long. And I'm just gonna cover the bank. Now with a kayak, I can only cover the bank and fish efficiently out of the left side of my boat. If I'm fishing the bank on the right side of my boat, it's just a disaster. I get hung in the trees and just horrible casts and stuff like that. So I've got a really good video on how to cast light lures on a bait caster i'll link it up in the up in the cards uh just so you can guys go watch that i really cover it in good detail but i'm gonna i'm gonna kind of cover the the basics of it right here now the key is the back cast you got to be able to load up your rod that's why i say a medium heavy motor is probably easier to easier to cast than a medium fast but the first thing i do is i let a little bit a little bit more line out than i normally do um when i'm when i'm throwing any other lure on a bait caster then the back cast is more of a an exaggerated lob okay so i want you guys to watch this i bring it back i and i'm gonna have to do it all in real speed or it's just not gonna work but i bring it back and i release it a little earlier than i normally would with a weighted lure okay so it's it's way back in the, you know your back cast is really really exaggerated then a lob and you release it about right here instead of right here okay and that's base that's the gist of casting a light lure on a bait caster. 
Oh, there's a fish right there. I was not expecting that. And it's a good largemouth, too. I was about to say, well, I don't expect to catch a fish today. This was a little bit deeper. I'd been talking and running my mouth. And... Dang. All right, so let's talk about how to fish it. <laughs> the technique that I use to catch them is a jerk jerk pause okay but i don't just two jerks and a pause all the time it's kind of a sporadic however i feel that second kind of thing i cast it out up against the bank now you notice i'm trying to fish as close to the bank that I, as i possibly can i'm actually going to let the wind push me a little bit closer and i want to parallel the bank as much as possible try to keep that bait between where i think the ba the bass are and the bank because they like this time of the year they like to pin that bait up against the bank to feed on them uh, makes it a lot easier for them to catch the bait. So throw it out. I'll let it sink for just a second and then pop, pop, pause, jerk, jerk, pause. And when I'm jerking it, I'm giving the line back to the bait. I'm not jerking it and holding it still down here. I'm going pop and I'm throwing it right back at the bait. Gives you a little bit more re erratic reaction and it causes that, that fluke to, to pop up and then fall back down. Now, one thing is most of the time, if I've got clear water, I want to be able to see that bait. And that's a good thing, and it can be a bad thing. But I, nine times out of ten, I don't feel the bite until it's too late when these fish are real picky. So I want to be able to see the bait as much as I possibly can. The water here is a little bit stained. It's a little bit more difficult to see it. But just makes it to where I catch every fish that bites the fluke. Now, if you're not careful, you can lose a fish because you see them bite. A lot like top water, dude. If you jerk too early, you're gonna jerk it out of their mouth. So what you do is once you see the bite, so I'm cast it out, I do a pop, pop, pause, and I see the fish come up and hit it, and I don't wanna set the hook right away, I wanna count to two, one, two, and then set the hook. And usually by then they've got the, the hook and the bait solid in the back of their, their mouth, and you can set the hook on them and, and, and get them in 99% of the time. So. That's key though, act like it's a top water. Give it a second once you see the bite and you'll catch the fish. With my XI-3, you guys at Kayak Fish, I keep the, the remote in my right pocket and my speed is usually four or five, but uh, just keep it straight and I'm just gonna cast right up against the bait and jerk, jerk, pause. And nine times out of 10, my casts are kind of a sidearm-ish cast. They're not overhand. Um, and mainly because when I get into stuff like overhangs and things like that, you'll see me on my videos when I'm fishing flukes, I'll skip it up underneath the, the overhangs and things like that. And it really is an easy bait to skip once you get the cast down. Um, low sidearm cast, it'll skip right up underneath there. And as I need to adjust my steering, I just kind of reach in my pocket and adjust my steering. But uh, I'm covering the bank. I'm watching for, blow, for fish to follow it. I'm watching for all kinds of stuff. And this is a great technique for fishing from the boat, fishing from the bank, uh, fishing from a kayak. It doesn't matter. Just cover water is the biggest thing. So I'm sitting here, and that bass that I caught just a second ago was a little bit deeper. So I let it fish, I let it sink out of sight just a little bit, and I just work the bank out. Now, key thing in the fall, though, Look for these shady spots. This will hold a bass a lot longer during, from the morning through the afternoon than, than uh, anything else on the bank. So when you get to a shady spot like that where you got overhang trees, and there's going to be a bass, or nine times out of ten, there can be a bass in that shade. And uh, very, very critical to work those really, really good. A lot of times they're on the points of the shade, right off the edge of it. Um, ambush and whatever swimming by. So... You see how fast I'm working though. I'm not letting it get out of the strike zone much before reeling it in. So I bring it four or five feet. There's a bass right there. Oh, it broke off. Nope, he just took, yep. Crap, I didn't retie. <laughs> oh, gotta retie. I hadn't retied from last week. So my bad. So as I was drifting towards where that fish bit, I realized that it was not a bass, it was a gar. So it wasn't that dummy me didn't retie, which I probably still should have. He said, that gar has a few teeth and those toothy critters, they uh, tend to cut your line pretty easy. So that's kind of what happened, but grab a new hook and dig in there and find a new fluke. And we'll finish up this video. 
like I said, the biggest thing is just to try to stay as close to the bank as you can, at least for the start, for early in the morning, all the way through till the shade disappears. Uh, these bass are gonna be super, super shallow. Um, and then just play around with the, the speed that you're jerking it and you're working the bait and how, how long you let it pause. And as soon as you figure out that, uh, that piece of the puzzle, you'll catch more fish. Now, um, also figure out how deep, how deep do you have to let it sink? Because a lot of times, especially in that super clear water, you still, you still can see it, but it's four, five, six feet deep. So just cover water, let it sink to where it's just barely out of sight. And then jerk it a little bit. And you're just trying to make it look like a dying bait fish. Play around with it. Have a whole lot of fun with it. No. All right, so that's how I fish a fluke um, most of the time. And I've got other videos on different little techniques and weighting and things like that. And I'm, I'm going to link down. I'll either link up here to the playlist or link down at the bottom. But um, otherwise, that way you guys can, co can watch everything that I've made about a fluke. Uh, I've got over probably around 800 videos right now. So there's a lot to pull from. But, uh, but anyway... I hope you guys learned something from this video. I hope you take this technique out and absolutely slay them this fall during the fall, fall transition. But like I always say, be sure to introduce somebody to fishing. Introduce them to my channel. Let me help, help you teach them how to fish. More importantly, get out on the water. Go ahead and catch some fish and have a great day. We'll see you.